Hey everyone, I'm Kevin, and I am going to play some Sentinels of the Multiverse today. So, I love this game. It's my favorite card game. It's my favorite uh, gaming experience right now, and it's also a video game. So, I want to do this series to help people get better at the game, and um, just change the way that we think about how we play the game, and so that's what we're going to do. So... I already have the game loaded here. Um, this is what you would call like a demo mode. This is, or a, not really a demo mode, it's a demo. If you were setting this up to teach someone for the first time, this is what you'd play. So it's the Freedom 4. Uh, there's also Absolute Zero in this game, but since he's a little more of a challenge and uh, most new players don't do well with him, uh, we don't typically do that. Against Baron Blade in War Wagner Mars base. So that's what we're playing. Let's start the game and see what happens. So Baron Blade always starts with this multi-tense platform place. Um, the villain always goes first, so he's going to start by doing two damage to everyone. Um, the way that the video game works that I really like. Adjust my camera here. Let's get a little smaller. There we go. So the video game works is nothing happens simultaneously, so you can choose what order damage happens. Um, sometimes that makes sense in the case like this, they're all going to take two damage, except Legacy is going to take three because he's a nemesis. So it doesn't really matter, so I'm just going to choose one. Alright, there's that toxic damage. Nothing I can do because it's the first turn, and he's going to play Slash and Burn. He's going to go four to the lowest and six to the highest. Ouch, and he's gonna do seven. Ouch. Okay, so now it's Legacy's turn. Legacy is very much a support hero, kind of like a tank. Uh, his power is to galvanize, so until the start of your next turn, you increase damage that everyone else does by one, which is a very strong power. Um, plus or minus one damage in this game goes a long way. Um, so for cards, if ever I get Inspiring Presence in my hand, I usually play it. Um, increases the damage that we deal by one, so it just makes everyone else that much better. Um, the other thing is, with Galvanize, usually he doesn't have a way to do damage and use Galvanize, um, so it doesn't really affect him as much, because you play your cards before you use your power. Inspiring Presence is always out there, and it also affects him, so it's just a nice little bonus. Alright. So all my guys are doing an extra damage, and there's another copy, just in case something goes wrong. Tachyon is probably my favorite to play. Um, she, her big mechanic is, um, she has these cards that have burst in the title, and then she has other cards that do damage based on how many burst cards are in the trash. So she likes to play as many cards as she can, and then her power lets her reveal the top card and either discard it or leave it on the top, which means she'll draw it that turn. Um, so I'm going to start with some quick insight. I didn't use... To, and here's that card. X, X damage or X the number of first cards in your trash. I never used to play quick insight, and then I realized that like she likes discarded cards, and so uh, I started using it a lot more. So I want to get rid of Sucker Punch. I've rarely used this, destroy a target to a your HP, but it is a burst card. And then for Baron Blade, I could discard this Sonic Vortex, but it's not a burst card, so I think I'm gonna get rid of this one. Oops, maybe. And then I use her power, so I get to look at the top card of my deck. And I never discard Lightspeed Barrages. It's too good. Oops, and, or I will accidentally do it. So the Wraith is a great character. She's kind of the Batman archetype. Um, I love... Uh, she's easy mode, basically. Uh, anytime you get Impromptu Invention, anything that says draw a card and you may play a card, it never hurts you to do, so you might as well do it. So I get to draw a card. I get to pick any card I want and put it in play. So usually I look at what's in my hand, 
I got some micro targeting computers, so I'm gonna be able to increase her damage by a lot. And I have a utility belt, so she can use multiple powers. Um, so there's a couple ways to build Wraith, and she usually will be able to, you can build her any of these ways in, in the given game because of impromptu invention. Um, you can infrared eyepiece, which lets her uh, keep the top card of the villain deck as a known quantity. It's very strong. Um, you could build her as like a disabled character, so she uh, stun bolt will deal damage, and even if it doesn't do the damage, it reduces the damage that the villain does by one. Remember, plus or minus one damage is huge. Um, or you can go for a pure damage build, which is what I typically do, and get a razor ordinance to do three, and then later on you'll get throwing knives that can do one damage each, and then the micro targeting computers makes that better. So I'm going to grab. And I get to play another card from my hand, so I'll put out a micro targeting computer. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit that defense platform. So I can't hit blade until this is gone, because he's makes some new damage. But seven damage in one turn is not too shabby. Excellent. Okay. So I am terrible with bunker. I never seem to do well with him. So I'm going to try this external combustion. He's going to hit himself pretty hard. It's where legacy can actually hurt you. And this is where order matters. So if I hit, if I just choose for me or do whatever I want, Baron Blade won't take damage because of this defense platform. But if I hit it first, boom. Now he's not immune to damage. Now hit him. Let's draw a card. Nice. And draw another card because it's the end of his turn. Looking good. Okay, so this. I don't like this card. And I don't like this card. Okay. So, before we pick, hold on a sec. Maintenance level. Here's what this does it requires you to play another card. Um, at the start of the turn, each player has to shuffle their trash into their deck. Usually that's not a big deal, but with Tachyon, she likes cards in her trash, so that's gonna hurt. But at the very least, uh, it's beginning of the game, so it's not a terrible problem. But Race of Red Dust is kind of annoying. Everyone has to discard a card. Uh, and it looks like I'm gonna lose my setup for the Wraith. But Pervasive Red Dust does let you cheat a little bit, which is nice. We'll get to that in a minute. Another defense platform, no problem. All right, I'm going to bolster allies. Everyone needs to draw a card. It doesn't matter who draws first. Great. And we'll galvanize. All right, Tachyon, she can split a foot. Everyone gets to draw a card. Love drawing cards. Uh, what do I really want to play right now? Uh, so here's the thing. I could quick insight and get more cards in there, but this is just going to wipe them away. So I might as well do some damage. Or, nah. I don't think I want blinding speed yet. Or do I? You know what? Let's try it. Blinding speed, just taking out that main. Do I want to discard this card? Yes, we can. So here's a little hack, is Pervasive Red Dust, when you, you can discard a card and then you can put an equipment card from your trash into play. So if I want, I can discard an equipment card, like I can discard the card I want to play so I don't have to play it in my turn, and that'll make sense in a minute. So let's say, I think I'm going to put out another Mark Turing computer, even though it won't help me immediately. Power. Uh, let's 
grenade launcher for him. So the best way I know to play Bunker is to get these damage dealing stuff and then put him in turret mode and let him just go to town. both of my stuff out in one turn. It's great. Alright, Baron Blade. It's fine. So lead from the front is great because it means that no one else can take damage except him, if I want. But it also means he takes a lot more damage. So this is cool. So attacking on whenever she's dealt three or more damage, you can choose to redirect it and destroy this card. So I can pair it with Bunker here with his grenade launcher. So all of these have to hit a different target. So one target two, a second target two, and a third target one. But I can hit the defense platform for two. I can hit Baron Blade for two. I can hit Tachyon for one, which would all of Legacy's upgrades are going to make it three. You get rid of Synaptic Interruption and redirect that damage back to Brand Blade. So it's just an opportunity for more damage. It's great. I This is not a burst card, but I like it, so I'm going to put it in my hand. Alright, let's see here. Alright, so here's a teaching moment. Um, so, Wraith, Wraith can only use one power a turn. So if I put out another equipment like Infrared Eyepiece, if I'm not going to use it this turn, I don't really need it out there. Um, I could use like a Grappling Hook or a Combat Stance, which doesn't immediately do impact me. Um, but before I put a second thing out, I should put this Utility Belt out, which lets you use an extra power. Um, and so that will let me hit the mobile defense platform. Get rid of that. And use my power to reduce the next damage I'd get dealt by two. So if I put the eyepiece out, it I would either be able to use that or the razor ornaments or the the hero power. Um, can't do all three, so it would be uh, it'd be less action economy. All right, so I'm pretty much set up. All I want now is a turret mode. In the meantime, I really like ammo drop. Because in turret mode, Bunker can't draw cards, but ammo drop lets you get around that. Uh, so, I think I'm gonna deal two and two. So I can hit this weapon right here. And again, I could do three and redirect it, but I think I'm not gonna do that. Good. Not too concerned about that. So that's going to deal two damage to everyone, and then they either destroy an ongoing card or take two more. Uh, that's going to deal with one more for me. And I'll just click through. And that used up the wraiths to pass here. I like my ongoing more than I need two damage prevented. Slash and burn. Alright, so I can decide who has the lowest. Legacy takes extra damage because he's Nemesis.
So I do have the option not to redirect this damage, but I think I'll do it. This is damage is quite a lot. Stop hitting yourself. Alright. I think I will... Do have a great skill right now. Take down not bad. Yeah, let's do that. This will be a turn where he doesn't get to play a card. That's nice. He is gonna hit me. Three. That's fine. Alright, let's see. I have. What does do this? Eight burst cards. So it's the slice speed bro. I just need to do eight damage plus modifiers. Go to the quick inside again. Well, let's put a foot. That's great. Interruption was great, but it's a burst card, so I want it. And Sonic Vertex doesn't help me that much. Uh, yeah, I don't need that one. Alright, so now I get to play a little more aggressive. But what does this do? I can discard two cards. Yeah, that's fine. And for an eyepiece, here we go. So I need to do a ton of damage, and look at the top two cards. Put one on the top and one on the bottom. Uh, they're doing elemental damage, so that could go on the top. Stumble, great. So at this point, I don't have much else to play with him. A lot of people like Omni Cannon. I find it doesn't work as well as for me as just having a setup out. So I guess I'll just adhesive foam grenade. Get a free turn to the environment not playing cards. someone who used two make mega computers and it made a huge difference but for some reason I just I never play it so that was great I got like a nothing turn all right let's try some flying smash burn blade getting it done doing the damage galvanizing So the rule of pushing the limits is always play it. Because even if you don't want to take two damage, you get an extra card draw and it costs you nothing. And you don't do that damage till the next turn. And foot of foot, again, it does a thing and you can play cards, so you, you never not play it. So I'm gonna discard it. The rule, it's not always like if you see a burst card, get rid of it. Um, but it's more, if it's a burst card, strongly consider getting rid of it. For me, anyway. Alright, so she's gonna be able to raise her ordinance. And then stun bolt for the, for the kill on this side. And this is why Baron Blade can play level 1 villain, because he doesn't really do much. He's already used his forced attacks on me. because you have to discard a card at the end of your turn and you do damage at the beginning of the turn so it doesn't feel like you're doing very much Whatever. Hey, you're so nice 
This makes everyone immune to damage. That's a lot of It's fine. That was actually a good time for that. And then I'll go to Temple Legacy and skip his turn to get rid of that. Or... So here's some strategy. Legacy's not really doing any damage anyway. Grappling Hook can just straight up destroy that Meteor Storm and Wraith can do some damage and so can Hook. But then tacking is not doing anything. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Yeah, let's do that. So I'm gonna Galva to increase my damage. Draw a card. It doesn't matter what I do because she's not going to take damage, so I'll lose her. She can research grant. So, research grant is just straight up better than this one because it guarantees you two cards, forces you to discard so you can get rid of your uh, burst cards. Draw a card, great. Getting it done, got an impromptu invention, which I don't really need very much. And now Gatling Gun takes effect. So if I had a turret mode, then I'd basically be done. Maybe I can finish him off. Fine, four to me, five to him. Not quite. It's one more turn. But at this point, I'm so far ahead. Yeah, sure. Fine, give him extra damage. He can't kill me. Another target, great. She can take it. Oh! Let's just... Redirect it to himself. Uh, sure. I guess I can do it. Alright. I always have to win if I can. Alpha Strike. Boom, 16 damage. Alright. So, that's that was the multiverse. That's the big, the big idea. Get it started. Let me know your thoughts. And we will keep on doing the channel.